Welcome to PC Gaming Tech Summary. I'm your host, Gamer. And today we look at the 3060 12 gigabyte video card versus the GTX 1070 Asus Strix Overclocked Edition. Yes. Um, so we'll look at uh, quite a few games and the differences between the two. Now, while we're looking at these numbers, the thing is, is that I've got a 7700, okay? An i7 Intel 7700, four core, eight thread. Um, its base is 3.6 gigahertz, and it'll boost um, up all core, I think is 4.0. Uh, two to three cores is 4.1. Um, one core is 4.2. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's a nice uh, CPU. It does a good job um, and doesn't use a lot of power, so that's great. Um, um, but you will see that um, when I'm doing some 1080p and even some 1440p testing, um, the CPU is causing a bottleneck. Okay, so... Uh, it's not able to produce the frames um, that we need. So that's why it's quite good that I'm a 4K gamer because then I don't need the CPU to be as powerful. Um, I let the graphics card do the work, which is what I let the 3060 do. Okay, so, um, so you will see um, in some of my results, when you go from 1440p to 1080p, um, there's sometimes there's not much of a difference. Um, so keep that in mind. But one game, you'll see Tomb Raider from 2013, which is a lot of fun to play. Um, I have done a video on it, put a bit of game footage in that. And uh, you're going to see some really good scaling there. So it's, yeah, it's, it's linear, linear scaling. Um, so even at 1080p, I think it might have been 200 frames per second, something like that. So um, that game doesn't require as much CPU power as some of the modern games. Um, so that is a very economical game, a long game. Um, if you're looking for something to play and, and you know it's Christmas time and all that, well, hey, there's going to be links down below for um, Fanatical and um, hey, um, last time I looked, it's only a few bucks, so hey, you want something good value? Hey, all right, so one thing that I did find um, is that the EVGA Precision X1 software is giving me a different result than the MSI Afterburner. And after looking at the MSI Afterburner, I could see that there were more watts being put through the card. So the difference was up to 8% in frames per second. 8%. So um, I had to go back and do a few more tests and benchmarks. So things took a lot longer than expected. Um, if you've ever sort of done this kind of uh, video, you'll know. Yeah, you just don't go up and talk, you know, there's a lot of work involved in it. But that's all right. I'm having fun and this is great. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll throw some footage in at the end of the video of me taking the graphics card out of the PC, uh, putting in the 1070 and then doing the same again when I get the new 3060. So what happened was the 3060 was overheating. Uh, out of the box, stock settings, 83 degrees, uh, playing Hitman 3 in 4K, and um, oh my gosh, the hot point was over 100 degrees on the video card. So yeah, I sent it back, I got uh, approval, uh, return authorization number and all that, and so I just asked them to, to replace the thermal paste, you know, put some nice thermal paste on there, the best if you can. And um, what they did is they sent me a whole brand new card. But unfortunately, the silicon's not as good on it. The GPU, the chip itself, um, I can't overclock it as far. 
and the memory. I can't overclock the memory from what I can tell so far. So, um, so we're just going to uh, concentrate on stock out of the box settings with a 3060. The 1070 is auto uh, is overclock. I use the uh, the OC scanner overclocking scanner, um, which creates a curve, an overclocking curve for it. Um, and um, yeah, so the MSI afterburner picked that up, that curve up, and and um, yeah, and so it just used that when I used the software. So all of the 1070 was with the MSI afterburner. Um, yeah, so hey, sit right back, have a cup of coffee, um, and relax. Um, I'll put some of this um, footage in the, at the end of the video because I don't know if I should make a whole new uh, another video just pulling the graphics card in and out. I don't know. So um, let's get into it. The first game is Death Stranding. Yes. This has Daryl from Walking Dead as the main character, yes. And in 4K, there is a 36.5% increase from the 1070 to the 3060. Also, 1440p, about 8 frames per second. Now, Alien Isolation. Now, this is a game uh, where you actually don't get guns and shoot the aliens. You actually have to run for your life the entire game. Yeah, and there's a 30.4% improvement going from the 1070 to 3060. And here is the benchmark, at least a little bit of the footage. I don't think many people have seen this benchmark. You put in a command into Steam, into the game, uh, for it to run this benchmark. It creates um, a text file with your results at the end so i just thought i'd throw this in and you could have a wee look all right well let's move on to the next one we have resident evil 3 just a quick benchmark going from 110 frames per second to 164 49 percent increase and that is fantastic now resident evil village yes resident evil village um with three gigabytes of textures at 4k we increase 79.3 percent going from 58 frames with a 1070 to 104 with a 3060 and if oh if we look at 1440p, we still have a 57% increase, so that's all right. And you can see at 1080p, not much difference. Now we have Hitman 3 Dubai benchmark, and there's a 52.6% increase from the 1070 to the 3060 and then if we jump to 1440p still 52.1 percent so that's all right so we're seeing a bit of uh, scaling there and if we have a look at the dartmoor uh, benchmark well this is a very cpu benchmark that's not very realistic as far as gameplay um there's like a gun shooting up books and all kinds of stuff like that and you, you just don't do that in the game um it's very cpu intensive and so there's not much difference between the 1070 and the 3060. now we have control yes this is a very odd game um well with ray tracing on um obviously the 1070 doesn't have much capability there um, in fact some games won't even run ray tracing um, they won't allow you to run it on there but in control you can so that's up 173 uh, percent using the 1070 going to the 3060 now once we turn the ray tracing off in 4k there's still a 43 percent increase so not bad not bad for the 3060 and then we go to 1440p 61.8%. That's all right. 
Jedi Fallen Order Epic 4K settings. Um, the rate, the frames are too low. Um, at 4K. Um, next we've got it using the dynamic resolution scaling in 4K, and there you go. Now I can play on my 60 hertz 4K monitor. No problems at all. There is an increase of 40.3% between the two graphics cards. If we look at 1440p, um, yeah, we can play there. No problems. Um, and then we look at the dynamic resolution scaling applied at 1440p, and we get a strange result. Um, the 3060 is worse and so the next time I put the 1070 in um, I will repeat this and confirm that this anomaly is occurring um, yes Far Cry New Dawn 37.8 percent improvement ah, that's all right 1440p ah, 10 frames per second and then 1080p, just a few, so bottleneck on my CPU is shown. We have Tomb Raider 2013. And look at this. We're right around 32% difference at 4K, 1440p, and 1080p. So it scales quite well. The CPU can handle it. All right, we have... Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Okay, so if we turn off ray tracing and DLSS, okay, we look at anti-aliasing of TAA, and we use the Fidelity FXCAS and put that at the minimum resolution. This is what we get. Okay, 1070's got 71 frames per second, and this is at 4K. 3060's got 100, so that's a increase of 40.8%. Once we move over to 1440p, we get a bit of a bottleneck on the 7700 CPU. Um, only about 11 frames difference. So I'm now showing you ray tracing results on the 3060 12 gigabyte. Okay, this is with the Ultra Shad the Ultra RTX. Ultra Ray Tracing Shadows, okay? And DLSS of Ultra Performance. We get 4K, 73 frames per second, which is great. 1440p, 91, and 1080, 94. Okay, again, uh, that small difference between because of the CPU bottleneck. Now we're going to move over to a little bit of footage of me changing the graphics card. The uh, power switch is off to the power supply. It's still plugged in. Um, and I'm just discharging any static here by touching the metal frame. Um, and. Uh, the, I live in a humid area, so there's not much static um, here at all. So, uh, such a worry. Okay, so we've got the power connector. This goes to the power supply. And we can remove that baby. Just, just squeeze that. Oh, uh, yep, I don't know if you can see that. But, uh, dust on there, micro dust, that I'll get rid of, um, so it's six and two, that separate there, and I just squeeze, I just, uh, squeeze back like that, just to, re to have it pop, pop over like that, and, uh, and then that released it. 
Okay, so there's some thumb screws in here. Take these. Nice, I like those. This is a Corsair 465X case. I don't know if they sell them anymore. They make pretty nice cases, Corsair, I think. All right, um, in general. Okay, so I already broke the retention clip on here. So um, this should just pop out. Whoops, my fan just came off. I'm gonna have to fix that. Wow, okay. The, um, the nuts are still on there. It, they're just <laughs> so small that they um, can come through those holes. All right, we'll just give her a clean up. We'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this protector off. Tension clip. I, I broke it off over here by mistake. Okay, so <clears throat> just um, this is just a temporary fix here. Um, there's some slots here in the uh, 
and the plastic, this is plastic here. And uh, I just, just to give it a little bit of support, I just put a string here, which of course I'll cut off when I take it out. Um, and uh, the, the fan here, I need, um, I don't have the right size washers, so I'm going to uh, get that, get the right size washers today and continue on with that. Um, so just, you know, one thing uh, you don't want to forget is to uh, plug in the power. So these are, these are different um, shapes. Um, some are square, some are, have a rounded side. So, um, yeah, so that hopefully will all just go straight in like that. Okay, uh, to be continued. Well, I've placed some washers here so that uh, the fans are a bit more secure. Um, so I've got uh, two, I had two spare fans, so I uh, put um, my spare Corsair fan here and the Noctua industrial fan on the, on the side as two exhausts. Um, when I first got the computer, it had this um, uh, Corsair AIO, and uh, I uh, didn't like the noise from the fan, so I replaced it with a Be Quiet fan, and did a bit of testing, and um, it re really didn't matter. Um, as long as there's a bit of air coming through, it would cool it enough, because um, the CPU has got a 65 watt TDP so it's uh, easy to cool um, and while I was working on the inside I noticed um, that there was some um, buildup on the inside on, on the uh, radiator so I uh, took the, the fan off and uh, uh, vacuumed the, the radiator, cleaned it up. Um, I've got a, a cat in my environment um, so if you do have a pet in your environment, you need to check your, um, your, your dust filters um, and your parts uh, more often. Um, okay, let's see if this works. We'll just uh, give it a... Got the uh, 1070 Asus Strix 1070 in there now. Um, I just put a bit of a string there to... Uh, uh, keep it from sagging and uh, hold it there a bit more secure. So um, well, we are into Windows. Um, everything's good. It's all working. Um, so I had uh, problems with finding uh, fan control software that I like. So once I added these two fans, I plugged them into chassis one and chassis two on the on the um, Asus um, H270 Pro motherboard, and um, um, even using the BIOS um, fan controls, I, I couldn't get get things. I couldn't get good control of my fans like I wanted. Um, so I did find a piece of software that I tried out for 30 days, and that's the Argus. A R G U S um, from Germany, and um, I was so impressed after 30 days over the control and everything that um, I I uh, go ahead went ahead and purchased it, um, and um, it's a one off one off fee, and you get a year worth of updates for free as well. So um, that's what worked for me. Thanks for joining us here on PC Gaming Tech Summary, and don't forget. You'll be seeing me in the next video.